Hey everyone, just a quick one this time. I want to go through some of the basics of deploying apps via Intune. First up, a nice easy one, VLC Media Player. Now be careful with this because the plugins are licensed, but the VLC Media Player itself is open source and free. So let's jump into that. Okay, so we'll start off at the Endpoint Manager homepage. I'm going to go to Apps, into All Apps, and then Add. And what we're going to see is we've got this list of applications that we can deploy. We have all of these, and the one I want to talk about is Line of Business versus Windows App. Now, the difference between Line of Business App and Windows App Win32 is that the Line of Business is an MSI. If we choose this, we see the extensions that are supported with the Line of Business App. We've got Android APK, iOS IPA, macOS Package, and Intune Mac. And then you've got Win Windows, which is MSI, AppX, AppX Bundle, MSIX, and MSIX Bundle. None of those are the ones I want to talk about today. They're very easy to do, and I'm sure you can find a guide somewhere else, or I might even do one later on if I get time. For me, I want to talk about the more complex one, so Windows app, which is Win32. And this is any application that isn't one of the ones that we've just looked at. So it's when you click that, it says, add a custom or in-house Win32-based app. Upload the app's installation file in Intune Win format. That's not a lot of information about what an Intune Win format is. Thankfully, they do say learn more, and you can click that and go to a docs page. Let's take a look. Just click on learn more, and you open up this page here. We have, uh, it tells you what the, in, the Intune Win file is all about, the Win32 app management in Microsoft Intune. You can read through that, and essentially we've got some prerequisites. We'll go through all of this, but I wanted to point out one big thing. When you're deploying Win32 apps, consider using the Intune management extension approach, which is the one we're talking about now with the Intune Win file, exclusively. Particularly when you've got multiple file Win32 app installers. If you mix the installation of Win32 apps and line of business apps during autopilot, the app installations might fail. Now saying in documentation that something might fail if you do it is not um, is not really clear enough. It's really a bad idea to mix Win32 apps and line of business apps when you're using autopilot. Not a good idea at all. And the reason is that they operate completely exclusively of each other. So Win32 will start to install, line of business might start to install, there's going to be no correlation between the two, and they might just cause a problem because they're both installing at the same time. They don't talk to each other. So we need to do one or the other. And Win32 is much more flexible because within Win32, we can install line of business apps. It's possible to package up an MSI as a Win32 app, right? So we, we just do that. And that's, I think, what it means when it says, when deploying Win32 apps, use that approach exclusively. It doesn't mean that you can't deploy line of business apps. It just means you can't, you shouldn't use the line of business app option when you're creating the app. Let's have a look. So anyway, so we, we've got the prerequisites. We've got, uh, they must be enrolled into Intune and registered joined or hybrid joined, all good, not a problem. The app size can't be more than eight gig. And if you're deploying an, an app bigger than eight gig, you've got bigger issues. Um, we need to prepare the app content for upload. And that's where we need this Intune Win file format. So it does give us a nice handy click that we can go through to. So let's jump into that and see what it does. And we've got to prepare the Win32 app content for upload using this Win32 content prep tool. There's a load of prereqs for this. Um, what I want to do is just jump into it and show you what it's like and demonstrate it. And, and hopefully all of this complexity will just go away. It's, it's really a very simple thing to do. We're just going to go in and click that. It opens up GitHub and you get this list of four, four things. We only want this. We want this Intune app, Intune Win app util.exe. I'm just going to grab that. And you can see we've got, uh, this is the path, this is the, the file. I want to just download it. So I'll go ahead and click download and that will stick it into my downloads folder. Okay, so that's put it into my downloads folder. As you can see, it's right here. All I'm going to do is copy that. I want it somewhere else. Downloads folder isn't ideal. Let's copy it. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it into a folder that I've just created called Intune App Creation. 
and there it is there it's just it's it just means that we can access it nice and quickly so to access it we do C Intune app creation and then Intune win app util you can see there are some folders I've created above really recently because I want to demonstrate the right way to do this so the first app I want to talk about is VLC Media Player. Let's go to the official VLC Media Player website, which is always the best place to get the, the, the installation source files. I'm going to choose Download VLC. We've got this option here to download specific versions, but we'll go for Windows 64-bit and just download that. Give this a few seconds. Okay, so as you can see, we've downloaded this VLC 3016 64-bit Windows file. I'm just going to copy that. I want to put it somewhere more useful. I want to put it in this folder I've created called VLC Media Player. And this isn't required. This is just for my own sanity to be able to understand how this all works. So we're going to choose VLC Media Player. And this is the source file. It's not the output file. We haven't created anything with this yet. It's the source file that's provided by the vendor. So we'll choose that. I'm just going to paste that file into there. Really simple. Now, what we're going to do is go over to our Intune app creation folder and take a look at what happens when we run Intune Win App Util. It's not a complex uh, script that runs. It says, please specify the source folder. Thankfully, we have one of those. I've just shown you it. I'm going to go into source, and this is it. I'm going to move these windows side by side so we can see both at the same time. And so we're going to put that there. So that's the source folder, nice and simple. The setup file, well, that's this. Just grab that. Put that in there. Now, notice in this, I'm not telling this uh, this script or this, this window how to install VLC silently. This isn't about getting the silent installation working. We certainly don't want to do something like this or like this in order to get this set of file in this, uh, in this field. That all comes later. Let's just get the, the content created, which is this, this file here. Now, the output folder, I cheated a bit. I've created that folder already. It's right there. Just need to put that folder here. All done. Next question. Do you want to specify a catalog folder? No. No, I don't. I don't want to do that. All good. And there we go. It's creating the Intune Win file. Give it a few seconds, and there it is. It's got the Intune Win file. This is a, a glorified zip file. It's packaged it up into a, a into a format that can be distributed to your clients and uploaded to the Intune portal, nice and simple. So we've got the file, that file that we started looking for, if we head over to the app type, this is the Intune Win file that it's talking about. So we're ready to go. We'll choose select. We'll choose select the app package. I'm just gonna put that Intune Win file that we've just created, VLC Media Player, it's in the output folder, which is nice and simple for us to get, and it's called Intune Win, nice and simple. So it's there. Now this file is 40 megabytes. It's important to understand why it's 40 megabytes. And the reason it's 40 megabytes is because everything in the source folder was 40 megabytes. Yeah. What we see is that it's taken this source folder and compressed it. So if, for example, I use my download folder as the source, let me just choose Intune WinApp Util and you know the file is technically in my downloads folder, so I'm just going to grab that. If we use that as the source, and then choose the same setup file, setup file, this one here, and then put the output folder as uh, this here, output VLC, for example. This is the wrong way to do it. I'm just demonstrating what you should never do. We do that. It doesn't exist so we can create it we don't want to create a it to use a catalog folder but let's look at what happens it's taking a lot longer right we're at 12 percent at the bottom there and again as you can see the calculated size for this folder is this number here what is that A lot. Let's change that to gigabyte. 20 gigabytes. It's now creating me a 20 gigabyte file. So why is that? Well, it's quite simple. The content 
within this folder here contains a load of stuff. For example, it's not just all these files that I've downloaded recently. I've got an old downloads folder here. Let's just take a look at how big that is. Put the properties on it. Yeah, we've got 18 gig of files within this download folder. I cleaned it up for this demonstration, but this is a lot of content that's going into this Windows file, Intune Win file. So let's cancel that. It is very important when you're choosing the folder as the source folder, you don't contain any other files within that. I showed an extreme example there of the, the way you can include everything in your downloads folder into that. But the, the idea is the same. If you have old versions of that file, if you've got any other applications or anything in that folder, you, you're going to include them in that Intune Win file. And that's not really what you want to do. This needs to be as streamlined as possible. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. We've got this app package file. As I said, it's 40.73 megabytes. We'll just choose OK. And now we've got this metadata that we need to add about this file. So we're going to call this VLC Media Player because that's what it's called. It, the description, yeah. Um, not too fussed on the description, but we'll call it VLC Media Player. Choose OK. And then publish share will be VLC. And then we'll just scroll down and choose next. So program install command. This is where we get to choose the silent install command that we can use for this file. So I'm just going to grab that here. It needs to include the full name of the executable. So for example, this here, and then the silent install command. I've chosen a very simple application slash S will do me for the standard installation of VLC. It won't include any plugins or, or clever stuff, but it will at least do that. Next, we have to figure out how to uninstall it. This is not an optional setting. We need to choose the uninstall command for this application. It is really simple to find the uninstall command for this application, mainly because it's VLC and it's nice and easy, but really it should be quite simple anyway. For example, I've already installed this on my computer. So we've got uh, the uninstall file in program files, VLC LAN, VL, video LAN, VLC, so let's just grab that. I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go here and do uninstall and grab that. And this is the file I want to use. And in my case, I'm lucky enough that it is slash s, which will do the silent uninstall. So all good. We have some um, options here. Is it installing as the system or as the user? We want it to install as the system because it's a system application and it's running all users on this computer will have access to it. So we need it to run as the system. There's the tooltip for you if you're interested. Device restart behavior, the op the default, op default option is app install may force a device restart. And that is possibly true, it might, but it, in this case it doesn't. So we can do no specific action or de determined behavior based on return codes. And then the return codes are important then, right? So if it successfully installs, its return code is zero. Very simple. Also, if it installs successfully, a return code could be 17 or 7. These are all the standard return codes. So 13, 3010 is soft reboot, 1641 is hard reboot, 1618 is fast retry. So we're going to choose, we're going to be happy with those. There's nothing special about this application I'm deploying. So let's just go ahead and choose next. Operating system architecture. It's 64 bit. That's the default for the application. Let's keep it as that. Minimum system version. I mean, I don't want to install any version of Windows lower than the one that's supported. So let's do 1909. Everything else is completely optional, but you're welcome to set this. We'll choose next. And then this is where we need to configure a detection rule. Now, if you're familiar with Config Manager, you will be familiar with detection rules. But if you're familiar with installing applications on computers, you'll be familiar with detecting whether an application is installed, even just in your head. So when you install VLC, for example, a shortcut appears on the desktop. That is your way of knowing that you've installed the app. You look at it and you say, brilliant, the app's installed, all good. You maybe run the application to check it, to check it runs. We need to give the system the same concept. We need this Intune platform to be able to find a way of detecting whether the application 
has installed. And we do that with these rules. The easiest rule to use normally is the uninstall file because that will always disappear when the applications are uninstalled. So in this case, I'm going to choose add and the rule type I'm going to use is file. Let's choose file and then just tap in that uninstall folder and then the uninstall file is uninstall.exe. Now the detection method here, I can choose file or folder exists, the date is modified, the date is created, the version in a string format, or the size in megabytes, which is really up to your, you and your use case. But really, if we choose file or folder exists, then if we're planning to update this application in the future, we won't be able to use that detection method in the future. We, need, we might need to change that. So it's a good idea to use the string version number and then choose a version number. So let's just give you an example. And it is, uh, go to properties, uh, details, no version at all. Okay, so we're not going to use the uninstaller. Uh, let's try VLC actually, VLC.exe, because that's the, that's the file that gets created. So let's take a quick look. Okay, so we've got VLC just here, let's see what the version is. Properties. Secure, nope, not security. Details. 30.16.0, we've got a version there, perfect. I'm going to use 3.0.16.0. Okay, great. So now the computer knows how to detect whether it's installed correctly. Dependencies, I don't have any dependencies on this. There's nothing else that needs to be installed as part of this. Next, we have supersedence. Supersedence is in preview, but it's still awesome. And I'm not planning to look at it in this. We have another video, I'll link it at the top, but not right now. Uh, I do want to talk about it, but I haven't got time. So we're going to choose next. And this is where we get to choose the required groups that are going to be deployed to. In my case, I want all of my devices to get it. So let's choose include on all devices for required, which means that it's enforced on all devices. So good, the group is all devices. I'm not going to talk about filters because they're not really important. They're essentially a way of targeting more specifically and more dynamically about who gets this. For now, though, let's look at uh, end user notifications. I want to show all tools notifications for this because it's a really good demo. But for a rollout, I'd probably just go for a computer restart because users don't need to specifically know when the application's been installed. With regards to the availability, I want it to be installed as soon as possible and in well available as soon as possible and installed as soon as possible so that's fine so next and we're all good let's we'll choose create it's saving the application it's created the app and now it's uploading that content that 40 meg that we talked about is now being uploaded to intune once that's done it will get the app ready for deployment and then deploy it to all of my devices really simple I'll give it a few moments to do that and that's it really. I've deployed the application to my devices. It will take a few minutes and install on those devices and then use the detection method to check that it installed and then tell Intune that the install succeeded. Really simple. I really want to look into app supersedence. I mentioned the video we've done before on this, but really want to cover that again for you. So let's take a look at that next time. But for now, see you next time.